This area in the south of Lyon, France, is known as the Chemical Valley, and its name is no coincidence. Chemical and petrochemical industrial giants have facilities here. Many of these sites have been classified as presenting the risk of causing major accidents, and worrying levels of PFAS, also known as forever chemicals, have been discovered. But what are PFAS exactly, and why are they causing concern, not only here, but all over Europe? This is European Stories. Parent polyfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, are a group of thousands of synthetic chemicals, and they are everywhere. From rain jackets to pizza boxes, to guitar strings, waterproof makeup, and even dental floss. PFAS are also used to produce technologies that are key for the green and digital transitions, such as semiconductors, electric car batteries, and even wind turbines. They are highly resistant and very good at repelling water, grease, and oil. But what makes them so useful also makes them potentially harmful. They are called forever chemicals because they don't naturally break down in the environment. Today, they can be found in water, soil, animal feed, and even in our blood. Research conducted across nine European countries found PFAS in the blood of teenagers in every single country studied. Scientific studies have linked PFAS to cancer, cardiovascular and thyroid diseases, infertility, and immune system disorders. Most technologies for PFAS treatment used today only serve to remove them from water and they are expensive. Currently, only a few PFAS are banned in the European Union, but this could change. In 2023, five European countries proposed restricting PFAS on their reach the European Union's chemical regulation. The European Chemicals Agency is now evaluating the proposal. It will then share its opinions with the European Commission, which, together with member states, will decide on the restriction. In France, PFAS have been making the headlines. The National Assembly and Senate recently adopted a bill to ban forever chemicals by 2026 in cosmetics, most clothing, and ski waxes. And here in Lyon, the Greater City Council is taking two giants of the Chemical Valley to court, the Japanese air conditioning manufacturer Daikin and the French firm Arkema, a world leader in specialty materials such as adhesives and fluorochemicals. Both groups are accused of releasing massive amounts of forever chemicals. Pierre Benit, just outside of Lyon, is one of the most affected areas. Many residents here are concerned. Thierry, who's lived in Pierre Benit for 70 years, is one of them. A journalist told him about PFAS in 2021. Thierry now heads a citizen group to raise awareness about them. I said, yes, if there's a danger for the population, we have to know it, and it's from there that it started. Thierry takes us to a vegetable garden a plot of land that the chemical manufacturer Arkema gave to its workers. Ça partait d'un bon sentiment et on s'aperçoit aujourd'hui que bah, c'était un cadeau un peu empoisonné. At the entrance, there is no visible indication of the controversy surrounding what is produced in this garden. Thierry shows us around. Là, c'est l'école primaire, l'école maternelle au pied et on a le, 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 le secteur le plus dangereux de, de l'entreprise qui est à 150 mètres. We are joined by Fabien, also a resident of the Chemical Valley. In his commune, saint symphorien de zon high levels of PFAS were found in drinking water. In the Rhone Valley, the local health authority estimates that around 150,000 people's tap water is polluted with PFAS. The state ordered Arkema to stop using PFAS by end 2024. But this doesn't solve the issue of those already in the environment. Les gens, ils continuent à manger ce qui est produit dans, dans ce potager La plupart des gens qui, qui sont dans les potagers, c'est des gens qui sont à la retraite, qui mangent leurs légumes depuis tellement longtemps qu'ils ne vont, vont pas cesser pour autant. I ask Thierry and Fabien if they still eat vegetables from the area. Alors moi j'ai un potager, c'est vrai qu'on s'est posé beaucoup de questions avec ma compagne, notamment parce qu'on a une fille qui a seulement 5 ans, on sait que les PFAS sont d'autant plus dangereux pour les, 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 les jeunes enfants. J'ai quand même un doute à les, à les consommer. Hein. As for Thierry, he no longer eats local. 
J'avais quelques fraisiers pour mes petits-enfants dans un, dans un grand bac dans, dans mon jardinet. Et j'ai enlevé les fraisiers, j'ai mis des tulipes parce que je ne veux plus que mes petits-enfants mangent les fraisiers qui, qui ont poussé à Pierre-Louis. Thierry might be right. Local authorities and even Arkema have advised people not to eat what is produced in this garden. Locals are also recommended not to eat eggs here. Back at Thierry's, I asked him if he thought European institutions could help. Here's what he told me. Est-ce que au niveau européen, il n'est pas possible de trouver une, euh, un accord entre tous les pays pour interdire ces produits Est-ce qu'on on est obligé d'avoir euh, des, des, des produits aussi toxiques Elles sont-ils vraiment nécessaires Can we do without PFAS in our daily lives? And is a ban at the EU level realistic? I contacted the European Chemicals Agency, which is currently studying a proposal from five European countries to restrict PFAS. We have two independent scientific committees, and they will evaluate this proposal that we have received from the five countries. So that's Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. And they have proposed a ban with use specific and time limited derogations. That means that derogations are proposed for uses where PFAS free alternatives are not yet available or suitable, or where the societal impacts are significant. For example, they have proposed a 12 year transition period for implantable medical devices. Whether it is easy or not, To replace the PFAS, it really depends on the type of use. In some uh, types of uses, it may be rather straightforward because there are alternatives available. But in uh, other uses, it might be quite uh, complex and maybe the alternatives are not yet available. But again, that's all in the proposal and that's being evaluated by the scientific committee. So at this point in time, I cannot really give you a final answer on what, what the opinions will be and what exactly the periods will be, but this is what has been considered in the proposal. So it's not yet clear whether there will be a restriction and what the conditions would be. The European Commission and the member states will have the final say. But if this happens, it could be a milestone in European chemicals regulation, as it would cover the whole family of PFAS substances. This would prevent industries from replacing PFAS with other PFAS.